society and made it what it, what, what it is today. And we'd like to recognize him for his contributions. Uh, he recently resigned. I'm thrilled tonight to be able to introduce uh, our speaker, Carolyn Hobart Fish. Um, she was raised right here in our fair city of Laguna. She worked at the Coronet Market on Glenary uh, and um, Forest. And after that, she worked uh, for many years at the phone company. Uh, she told me that building next to Whole Foods, nobody knows how to get in there, or if there's any dead bodies in there or whatever, but, <laughs> but sh she knows the inside of it. Um, it's not unusual that she was raised here in Laguna, but it's a little unusual that her parents, uh, Ed and Mildred Holbert, were also raised here in Laguna. As a matter of fact, uh, her mom was an early employee of the Pottery Shack, and her dad was one of the very first lifeguards here in town. In fact, her great-grandmother and great-grandfather used to camp on the sand here in Laguna. Imagine, uh, in these days of regulation, being able to put a tent on Main Beach and camp. So uh, they were here over 100 years ago doing that. Uh, tonight, we're going to hear primarily, though, about her grandmother. Her grandmother, Emma Jane, uh, you'll see behind me there, came to Laguna Beach in 1923, which I think, coincidentally, correct me if I'm wrong, board members, was the year our beloved bungalow was built. Um, she was divorced. He brought her three daughters with her, one of which is, uh, is Carol's mom. She got a loan. Now, this was before the Depression in the 1920s, so thank God she was able to get a loan. And she bought a small grocery store at 241 Forest. I believe that's where Cush's art gallery is now. And um, it was called The Food Shop. And her name was right there in big, broad letters, Emma Jane Pence. The Depression had a profound effect on Laguna Beach artists and business in town in general. And part of the story is how Emma Jane dealt with the Depression. I'm, I'm sure a speaker will get into that. So please join me in a very warm Laguna Beach Historical Society welcome for Carolyn Hobart Fish. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Carolyn Hobart Fish. I'm the daughter of, as, as he said, the daughter of Mildred and Ed Hobart, longtime residents of Laguna Beach. Need to go a little further here. My mother came to Laguna Beach at eight years old. My dad, Ed, came to Laguna Beach at 19. I was also raised in Laguna. And I want to thank, especially to thank, oh, you can't hear, okay. I want to especially thank the Historical Society for this opportunity to introduce my grandmother, Emma Jane Pence, and tell of her history in Laguna Beach. I would like also to tell one of the new board members, Johanna Ellis, I'd like to thank her so much for her help in getting this organized for me. I don't think I could have done it without her. She was terrific. Came to my house twice and helped me do the pictures and set everything up, so I really appreciated her. So my family came to Laguna, my great-grandparents, my great-grandmother was Lavinia McKinney. She came, she was born in the 1850s. She moved to Laguna Beach in 1921. Emma Jane McKinney Pence was my grandmother. She was born in the 1880s. She came, she was a Laguna Beach shop owner, keeper, and she came to Laguna Beach in 1921 also. Mildred Pence Hobart was her daughter, born in the 1910s grew up in Laguna Beach. She came when she was eight, as I mentioned. Ed Hobart was my father. He was born in the 1910s, and he came to Laguna when he was 19, and he was one of the first lifeguards in Laguna Beach. I was born in 1936, and I grew up in Laguna Beach, and um, went to high school here, went to elementary school here, and uh, I'm so grateful for that. This is my great-grandmother and grandfather, McKinney. That's the McKinney family. That is the family, the part of the family that, that actually got to Laguna Beach first. They moved, Emma's parents were the first family to come to Laguna Beach. In 1887, the family came by train from Cass County, Missouri, where they had a small farm. They bought seven of their children with them. Jonathan heard that there was land in California 
the government was giving railroads land grants to bring people west and to extend their lines. My grandmother was the first child born in California. They ended up in Buena Park that wasn't even a town yet. They came to the end of the line, walked to a farmhouse, and were offered the, uh, the farmer's corn cri crib to spend the night in. Later, Jonathan bought 18 acres of land right where Knott's Berry Farm came later. They left Buena Park after a couple of years and farmed in Riverside. My grandmother, as I said, was the first child. She was born in, in Buena Park. Jonathan had been a drummer boy in the Civil War and faithfully attended his meetings of his GAR, which was the Great Army of the Republic encampments. Often these meetings were in Laguna Beach. So began the, the family love for the beautiful coves of Laguna. They came by horse and buggy and camped on the main beach in the 1900s and that they were the first of the family to come to Laguna Beach. My great-grandmother, Luvenia, wanted to live in Laguna Beach. So in, after Jonathan died, her husband, in 1917, she had one of her sons build her a house on Myrtle Street. The number was 463. There is Luvenia, my great-grandmother, with two of her grandchildren. The one that on the left is, I believe, my Aunt Marion, my grandmother's middle, uh, old, youngest daughter, no, middle daughter, and the other one I'm not sure, but she was a wonderful grandmother to them, and wherever, wherever they were, was the, wherever she was, was the heart of the family, and they all were there all the time. I know, I'm sorry. So the family built the home in 1917 on, at 463 Myrtle. That's the home. And in 1921, she used it as a vacation uh, house for a couple of year, three years. And then in 1921, Lavinia McKinney moved in permanently. The, the house had hand-blown glass windows. It had a cellar door on the back. It was fun to slide down, had a nice slide on it. I actually lived next door when I was three years old, and they took care of me while my mother and dad worked. And I remember playing on that. I lived in Dr. Cox's house right next door. We did. My father was a policeman, and my mother worked for the water company. This is the 463 Myrtle Street address. It has been, it has been redone, and it was sold two years ago. Now it is up for sale again. It has been redone again and it's up for sale again for about $250,000 more. Amazing. It was sold for a million point something. This is my grandmother, Emma Jane Pence, and my mother, Meldred. And you see, that's where we were visiting. This is before they came to Laguna. They were visiting the family home at 463 Myrtle. They were visiting grandma. And in 1921, she moved. Emma actually moved to Laguna Beach. This is the arch at Heisler Point. It's got my grandmother and my mother up on the top. Um, it's got her sister, um, Mel, uh, her sister Grace Woodward at the very top. And uh, the next one down is my grandmother, Luvenia. And my grandmother's sister, Mildred, is the last one here. Now, that arch is no longer here, but that was in 1914, and they were at the beach. And look how they dressed so beautifully. <laughs> I love it. Here's Emma Jane, my grandmother, and her ex-husband, Arthur Pence. That's her three daughters that came to Laguna Beach with her. My mother is on the right. That's Mildred. My Aunt Catherine is in the middle. She was four years old. My mother was eight. And uh, my Aunt Marion is on the left. And she was six. So my grandmother came to Laguna Beach in 1921 to take care of her, of her mother, Lavinia, who was getting, elderly, getting older. The girl started school in Laguna, and she went to work at the time. She went ahead and went to work at the Hoover Market that was in the Warren Building on Ocean Avenue. She worked for the Edison Company, 
and she sewed for the lovely ladies of Laguna. She would carry her sewing machine. She had a little treadle machine, and she would carry it all over town doing, she was a beautiful seamstress. And I have a feeling she made those dresses. So it was, so this is, um, this is Forest Avenue and Park. The Laguna Beach uh, Pharmacy is on the corner. This is in 1924. The Powers Grocery that my grandmother eventually bought is the second building. And the third building is the Ravens Cafe. The old Ravens Cafe. In 1927, this is on Forest Avenue again. There's the drugstore that, it was the Laguna Beach Pharmacy. It turned into later, as we know it, it turned into Rankin's, and then it turned into Rawson's drugstore. Those are the ones that I remember. And next to that is the Power Market. That was Jack Power's Market, and that's who she bought the market from. She got a loan when she came with her two little girls. She got a loan and bought this grocery store. She was a single woman with three little girls. And she got a loan in 1927 and bought that grocery store. The owners before, the, the, before her was ja, uh, Fred Clapp, Clapp's General Store. The next one was Ken Woods. The next one was Kelly and Romer. The next one was Jack Power and that's who she bought the store from. The next one was Emma Jane Pence, and the next one that came in was Mariner's Stationers. And you'll note that the sign that is a Laguna, our Laguna landmark sign from 1926 was right there on the corner. It's the sign that says, it still is there. It says, this gate hangs well and hinders none. Refresh and rest and travel on. And it's been there all these years. Here's her store. Emma Jane Pence, high grade fresh meats. That was at 241 Forest Avenue. It was the tallest building on Forest Avenue and it was owned by Elmer Jarris, who eventually, I guess it was her father that I think owned the lumber company. When my grandmother bought the store, that's who, who owned that building. Here's an, another picture of the store on uh, 241 Forest Avenue. It is now the Violet Boutique. They changed numbers on Forest Avenue, and now it is the Violet Boutique. Here's the inside of her first store, and there's a lot of Iris products there. Fairies uh, seeds. Uh, the pictured is uh, they're not pictured as her butcher. It was butcher, butcher was over on the left. His name was Glenn Teeter. Pictured in the store there, the uh, customer is Zelda Handy. She was a teacher in town. Behind the behind the uh, counter there is Steve Stevens. Nope, wrong one. Okay. Soon after Emma bought her grocery store, the city of Laguna Beach incorporated. One of their first orders of business was to condemn her building for being three feet out in the sidewalk. So you can see how, with these two pictures, you can see the side of the building, how it sticks out there in the sidewalk. The, the streets weren't paved, but the sidewalks were. So you can see. So they condemned her building, and she received so much support from the community. She even got a friend, a, friend, a, a letter from her friend, Dr. Brayton Norton. And I want to read that to you because it's just really wonderful. It's, My dear Emma, was sorry to learn today that the wrecking crew had been working on you again. That is what were I inclined to joke, might be called a poor recompense. 
Don't let them get you down, however, and whatever happens, don't let them talk you into going to the women's exchange. You're a long way from whip yet. Hold everything you can, and if there's anything old Doc Norton can do, hang out an Iceman's card, and I'll motor right over. Isn't that great? Seriously, Emma, we miss you. On the streets and everywhere, but particularly on the streets. Gosh, how we do miss you on them streets. And we're all looking forward to the great day when all that's left will be salvaged and you will be with us again. Very sincerely, sincerely yours, Brayton S. Norton, MD. So she moved her store to 243. Now that's the letter. She moved her store to, to uh, 243 Forest Avenue. And this is the inside of that grocery store. That was where, let me find that picture. That was where the shoe seller is now on Forest Avenue. She renamed it the food shop. Her office was in the back of the store where she always had a pot of soup going or something hot and nourishing. The new store re required constant attention and her girls were in Laguna Elementary School. As they got over, however, they clerked after school and on Saturdays for their mother and shared home chores. In the picture is her butcher, Glenn Teeter. Let me go back one more. No, forward, I'm sorry. Well, I can't find that now, wait a minute. Hold on here. <laughs> okay. When she had, when she was there a year at the new store, we found in the Los Angeles, in the Laguna Beach Times, uh, greetings on the first anniversary, the Emma Jane Pence food shop. And it was such a nice ad, and I look at all those signatures on there. Here's Joe Thurston, Marie Thurston, uh, Doris Murf Murray Palmer, there is the White House, uh, Mrs. H.P. Macbeth. There is Mrs. Norman Chamberlain. There's just so many people of the early people that were, that, you know, congratulated her on her first year. The Beach Plumbing Shop. There's the uh, Yacht Company. There's just so many people that, that were happy for her that she had moved, got a new store, and uh, had a first anniversary. Okay, this is in 1932, and this is her ad in the, in the paper. Her telephone number was 53. She was at 243 Forest Avenue, and these were the 1932 prices. It's so amazing. Iris wax paper, nine cents. Um, Quail Baltimore Cove oysters, two for 25 cents. She sold a lot of special foods. Uh, one half pint of Wesson oil, 49, uh, free, with a three pound can of snow drift. <laughs> uh, Bear brand toilet tissue, six for 25 cents. Look what we pay today. Boiling beef, two pounds for 15 cents. Swiss steak, one pound, 20 cents. Pork loin roast, 12 cents a pound. Gold dust, the busy cleaner, saves time, saves labor. Regular 10 cent package for five cents. <laughs> so I just thought that was just a great, a great ad. And there's my grandmother again. Through the years prior to the depression, Emma was doing quite well. She bought a home on Rosa Bon Heuer and Cypress Drive and later had an additional home built on the back of that. That home is still there. Those home, both, both of those homes are still there. No, I don't want to do that. Wait a minute. I lost.
lost it here. Sorry. No. no. Anyway, I have another uh, little picture of, it's the same picture on Forest Avenue and Park Avenue. I don't know what happened to it. Disappeared. Okay. Anyway, anyway, it's okay. The depression years that followed were especially busy, busy for Emma. This is the real story on why, why I think she was such an, such a wonderful woman, and she was so kind and good, and she gave so much of herself. The depression years that followed were especially busy for Emma, when it was very difficult and unsure as to whether she could get through it. But by grit and determination and relentless drive, she managed to do so, even though other businesses, small and large, failed. The store enjoyed the patronage of many wealthy Laguna families whose credit was unquestioned. Also, many early artists who lived in, in or visited the town were free to charge their purchases as well as the regular permanent families of the town. It is not difficult to understand the seriousness of the financial problem that confronted Emma during that time. In order to have a lower cost meat supply at the market, she built hutches and pens and raised rabbits on a vacant lot out in the canyon. Every morning before the, the store opened, she went out and tended her rabbits, and every night she went out and tended them again. Um, also at the time, she was cooking soups, stews, pies, and cookies in her back office and feeding the hungry artists and locals of Laguna. Not, m many, not many paintings were sold, were being sold, and some of the artists were starving. Many were given store credit and some bartered with their artwork. Also, many people were coming to her alley door. It's the alley right across from the library, right behind the stores on Forest Avenue. They were coming to the door begging for food. She always gave to them generously. After the Depression, many of her customers owed Emma Jane and could not pay. In 1941, she had to close her store and also sold her two houses on Rosa Bonheur Drive and Cyprus to pay her bills. At that time, Emma Jane left Laguna Beach and went to live with her daughter, Catherine. Later, she lived with her nephew, who wrote a book about the family history. Emma dictated much of this information to him. She died at the age of 78, leaving a legacy of three children, six grandchildren, and 13 great-grandchildren. This is Edgar Payne, who was one of the artists that she helped. He would come in, and in fact, in her store, she had a picture of one of his paintings that he gave her, that up on the store in, the, in one of those uh, pictures I showed at the beginning, an Edgar Payne painting. He was, he was one of the local artists. He founded the Laguna Beach Art Association along with Anna Hills. Anna Hills used to come in all the time, and he helped her, she helped her too. There were so many artists that, that would come and she would give them food or give them credit. Another artist that Emma supported and helped was the Baroness Lucienne de St. Mart. One day, Emma Jane asked her niece, Margaret, if she had any extra money. Margaret, Margaret Woodward was 16, and she was uh, in and out of the grocery store doing errands for Emma Jane all the time. Emma told Margaret to get in the car. We are going to Lucianne's house. She needs, she needs to buy a painting from her. She needs money. If you don't see a painting you like, give her $20 anyway. And she will paint you one later. Just go ahead and give her the $20. She needs money desperately. So up they went to the house. It was a 1279 Temple Terrace. That was, that was Lucienne de St. Mart's house. They went up there and they bought a painting from her. And this is the painting that they bought. It is of the Cecil Bruners. 
and a very uh, uh, ironic thing that in 1955, my father worked for Laguna Federal, and this Lucy Ann's house came up for sale for $9,500. My father, my folks bought it, and they lived in that house at 1279 Temple Terrace for about 40 something years. When we first, I remember the day we went and looked at it, and the hole inside, she you only lived in one room. The hole inside of it was, had chicken wire all around. It was not finished at all on the inside of the room. She lived in the very top in one room. And the floors were painted up in the top. They were painted, they were, oh dear. <laughs> they were painted, uh, let's see, royal blue and bright yellow. And you could just tell it was a real artist's home. Anyway, so my folks uh, lived in that for about 40 years. This is a picture of my mother and her classmates. There are so many. My mother's up at the very top row with the braids. And there's so many, so many names in, this, in these pictures. There are, let's see. There's uh, Barbara and Mary Ish, Jane Jan's family. Uh, Jane Jams, let's see, Johnny Verdugo, that's a very well-known name in town. Perrin and Verdugo, they opened up Crest Street with their construction business. There was Dick Malone, he was in there. He was one of the first lifeguards. With, my dad worked with him as one of the first lifeguards. There's Will DeWarty, he was a famous Laguna Beach fisherman. They all went to school, and this is on, in the steps of their school. There was Kathleen Culvern of Culvern's Bakery, one of the first bakeries in Laguna. Luella Marshall, who was also a lifeguard, a girl lifeguard in Laguna Beach in 1930. Margot Sangster Goddard, one of the first models of the pageant along with my father. Agnes Durkham, Durkham's built the pier, the second pier in Laguna Beach. Russ Hine, who had a jewelry shop here in town, and was he and my mother were twins. They had the same birthday. Al DeWarty, that was a fisherman, and Doris Goff, Treasure Island, Gulf Island. Oh, there's the picture I was missing of the Great Depression. <laughs> we already talked about that. That's when she lost her store and her, and her houses. But that's Forest Avenue. 1930s, late 1930s. There's my father, Ed Hobart, who was one of the first lifeguards in Laguna Beach. He came to Laguna when, when he was 19. He, uh, he went to work with, uh, he, went, he guarded with Dana Lamb and Dick Malone. And he, he loved guarding. He talked about it so much all his life. Soon they're gonna be doing, uh, they have a lifeguard book coming up one of these days, and they'll have a lot of the old lifeguards. There were girl lifeguards. This is my daughter, Janet, who went to see a picture of her grandpa that is posted in the new Laguna Beach Lifeguard headquarters. I didn't know it was there. I walked in the opening day, and there was my father on the wall. It was such, a, it was such an emotional, wonderful thing for me to see. So that's my daughter, Janet, and that's her grandfather called him Papa. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Anyone have any questions? Carol, I have a, I have a Stephen. The house on Myrtle Street, I yes. remember, that's where your dad taught me to ride a bicycle. My dad had given up on it. Oh, this is, this is my cousin Stephen, <laughs> one of Emma's grandchildren. He looped his belt to the back of the machine and ran along. Next thing I knew, he wasn't there. He was holding the belt. Oh. Michael. On Broadway, on the north side of the street, there's a lot of little bungalows, little like 
Tent City. Tent City. Mm -hmm. Tent City, right. There sure were. That was a long time ago. I think they built those for the students of the Marine Lab when it first went in, and that was, what, 1800s, night, something like that. Yeah. My, yes, my grandmother moved away in 1941 after she, she had to sell the store because she needed to pay her bills. And the people just, they didn't have money and they could not pay her. And you know, this is another thing about my grandmother. I never heard one resentful word from her about that. She so enjoyed her life in Laguna Beach. She enjoyed her store and how we all enjoyed her. She was, we have right here, we have one, two, three, four, four of her grandchildren are here tonight that are my cousins. And there were six of us, we lost one, but there's four of us here, there's five of us here tonight. And she was the most wonderful grandmother that ever was. She taught us so much. She loved Laguna Beach. She taught us about the wildflowers. She took us for walks all the time. She taught us about wildflowers. She, wildflowers. she told us about the stars. She read to us. She memorized poetry and recited poetry to us. She was there when all of our babies were born. She was there when her own daughter's babies were born. She was just such a wonderful grandmother and a wonderful sister and a wonderful daughter so very grateful to have had her in my life yes sir uh, oh yeah no I didn't know but I'm sure she did uh, mr. mr. Fred Clapp he was one of the first first uh, stores in Laguna Beach that was his that was the first Clapp's general market was the first general grocery store and you from what I heard through the stories you could buy anything there or he would find it for you and that is where my that was my grandmother's store in 1927 when she got a loan and bought the Powers market and then she bought it after Mr. Powers had it yes Glenna um, Thank you he very had much. He did. Thank you so much, Glenna. Uh, someday, maybe I can come back and do a program on him. He certainly did. He certainly was involved in this town. Uh, he started out as a lifeguard, then he was a policeman, then he went in the Navy and he was a quartermaster on the USS Maryland, then he came back, and what did he do then? He came back, he was a policeman after he got back from the Navy. And then he, uh, he was a surveyor, he, was, he worked for Laguna Federal, he was one of the first, as I mentioned, he was one of the first uh, models in the pageant of the master, the living models. He and uh, I mentioned her name now, I can't was think. He, a fireman at one point too? he was not a fireman. Uh, Grace Woodward and Dee Woodward that moved into the house to take care of our great grandmother, yeah. Lavinia, that was Dee Woodward. He was one of the first volunteer firemen in the city. He also uh, was the fifth fire chief in the city and his granddaughter Janet is here tonight Janet Woodward Perrin <laughs> yeah oh yeah he, those were the days I know they were the days. Right. Right. I remember my dad just coming home from work. We lived at, uh, on Crest Street. 
And he would come home from work, put his trunks on, and down to the beach he'd go and come home with dinner, right from the, the big rocks down there at Crest Street. Another place he used to dive was, uh, was at the rock pile. A beautiful abalone from the rock pile, pink, pink abalone. And he'd bring it home, and we'd just put it down on the sidewalk, a little bit of wax paper down, and pound it, and just, oh my gosh, it makes my mouth water. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's when he was in the living pictures. And he was one, of, as I say, the first model. And I think the first picture he did was called The Quiet Rest. And uh, he was all bronzed. And uh, he also was a discus thrower at one time, too. We do have a picture of that. Jane. Did it, but he had so many funny stories, so much experience in this in Laguna Beach. Yeah, yeah we do, and we we will someday. I will definitely be very happy to do that someday. Oh, <laughs> that was. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Carolyn, thank you very, very much. It was a wonderful, wonderful talk. Thank you. And we traditionally ask the speaker to kind of uh, hang for a few. Sometimes people might want to speak to you more privately. Um, the last piece of business is to invite you back to our next program. It'll be the last Tuesday of November. That's November 25th. I believe it's the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. We will host the program Historic Irvine Family Movies. The Irvine Family Historian and our own board member, Ari Jensen, will present the DVD production filmed by James Irvine II and the Myford Irvine between 1920 and 1932. The program was produced by Eric and Mark Chamberlain of the BC Space Gallery for the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. So that'll be a very, very good program. Hope you all can join us there. Thanks for coming tonight.